All right, well, I'm here with Marcus Murray, and uh, you um, are back again. It's been a while. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's, it's been two years yeah. since I did the tech yet, so I'm very happy to be back. It's yeah. really cool. Yeah, good to see you again. Thanks. Um, and uh, so you've d here you've got a, a Windows 7 security session. And uh, from talking with you, apparently you have a really uh, cool hacking demo on Windows 7. And I was thinking maybe we could just start off with that, check it out. Since you're asking for it, I can give it to you. I mean, the whole session is uh, starting off with a hacking demo. And then we talk about the countermeasures and new features in Windows 7. Uh -huh. So let's do the demo. Why not? All right, let's do it. OK, so in this hack demo, we have an attack machine on the internet sitting over here. And we have the target sitting on an in internal network in an enterprise. And this guy is kind of lazy, you know. He's sitting on his job, has nothing to do, and he's Googling for something. So he's going to Google for, let's say, the coolest game ever. And for some strange reason, it comes to this uh, Worms, a true production site, which is listed number one out of six million sites. That's my company, by the way. <laughs> so he clicks on this link, and it takes him to the coolest game ever. He wants to play it, of course. He's kind of bored. So he's going to open it up. And if you look at it, it's an Excel spreadsheet. How dangerous can that be, right? So he's going to fire it up. And while we're waiting for this, let's check the other side. This is the attacker on the internet. And he's got a game server. This is actually a hacking server waiting for hacked clients to connect back to him on the internet. So he's just waiting. And if the guy gets hacked, his command prompt will enter on the screen. So let's get back to the lazy guy sitting at his job Googling. So all of a sudden, Excel comes up. And this is actually a game. And this computer is a Windows 7 normally configured the way it should be and he wants to start the game so he's going to press start the problem is that in the default settings macros are disabled but a user can change that and if you want to play the game of course it's going to enable macros and in office 2007 it's very easy to find security warning macros has been disabled options so let's enable the content and he's already hacked but just to show you what my friend did, there's actually a game here, so you can play the old worm game in Excel. It works. <laughs> kind of geeky, I know, but <laughs> why not? So let's look at the other side. This guy is now hacked. If you do hyperconfig, this is his IP address, 106 in the end. If you look at my machine, the attack machine on the web, hyperconfig, this is 6, not 106. So this is not a machine. So basically, when we did the demo in this session, we took this further, because now we have a, a connection to the internal network. And we have owners on one box, so we leverage from there. And then the entire session is about how you can prevent this attack, what settings, what features you can use to make your network hack-proof using Windows okay. 7 technology. That's OK, all right. Well. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's dig into uh, the prevention of that. Yeah. OK. Good, good thinking, man. So that was pretty cool. It looked, it looked almost just really too easy. Yeah, and actually, it is that easy sometimes, or most of the times. And that's what I want people to know, because there are so many security features in the boxes nowadays, and we're not using them. We trust the old antivirus thing. Mm -hmm. you know, this one is not detected by any antivirus in the world. Mm -hmm. so, it's custom made. So, what are some of the then? What are some of the features in Windows Seven that we can can enable that would prevent that kind of attack? I mean, of course, you should use the old school features like regular hardening and stuff. You should not be allowed to use macros that are not signed. But if you look at the new stuff, we have, for example, App Locker, Application Locker. So you can actually decide exactly what applications are allowed to run. Mm -hmm. And we had uh, software restriction policies in the XP, and it was a fairly good feature, but it was so inconvenient to use. It was so non-user friendly. Mm -hmm. And in AppLock, you just you follow a wizard, and you have whitelisting in your entire system. So I think that is a great feature. For mm -hmm. example. Yeah. Okay. What are some What are some other ones? I don't know where to start. You, know? you don't know where to start. Yeah. <laughs> There's lots <laughs> so of them. So many. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. One thing is. Uh, 
I'm not going to promote the UAC user account control too much because it's not really a security boundary. Mm -hmm. But the way Microsoft has done it is that they have worked a lot with UAC so people start running a standard user. If you run as a standard user, I can still get on the box, but I will never be able to leverage my attack. So the work Microsoft have done with USC, which is even better with Windows 7, makes it so much easier to run as a standard user. Mm -hmm. And if you're a standard user, I can never change the app locker settings and stuff like that. So right. that's a very good start. You need to run a standard user to make the security work. Mm -hmm. Some other things, uh, I mean, the firewall should be used more than it is. In Windows 7, we can have different policy policies running simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So even though you have the wireless interface connected to some hacker that does some nasty mm -hmm. stuff to your wireless, and yeah. you're also connected to the corporate network, you can have a good policy that says, I'm not going to care about what you do to me on the wireless, but I'm going to be a little bit more open on the internal. It's not going to affect me. Mm -hmm. So I mean, there are so many different features. OK. So AppLocker. Uh that I think that's that's an, uh, an ideal world, right? Because then it's just you've got a white list of only things that you allow to run. But I think a lot of people don't necessarily want to go through all of that that effort. So what would you say other than maybe that? And uh, what would be one main thing that you would say for people to do to enable like with Windows Seven for security feature? The one, f the, the one, one the key, like the one or two, maybe at ones, because you mentioned some here. Yes, those are actually the ones. The ones you would say. Yeah, I mean, okay. if I could do only two things, I would run as a normal user, and I would run whitelisting with AppLocker. Okay. That would be the number one and two. Okay. But then there are so many other things when you look at it from the enterprise perspective, because mm -hmm. there is, for example, a new feature called uh, authentication mechanism assurance. It's okay. not really a Windows 7 feature, it's in Windows uh, 2008 R2. Mm -hmm. But it's a really cool feature that you can do mapping with your smart cards to membership of a group. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you want the user to have username and password for some occasions, he'll be the normal user and he will be a member of the normal groups. But if you want to access that super secret share with that super secret information, he will have to insert his smart card. As soon as he does it, there will be a mapping in Active Directory, so he will get a dynamic membership, and he can now access that. I think it's really cool in the real world, because you can have it like um, together with IPsec policies. So if you are a support admin, and you enter the smart card, you will become a member of the support admin group, and you will be able to access the client computers, for example. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It, it is very cool. It's really cool. I love it. I mean, just playing with it. and. I presented on the session, and I think one or two of 700 have ever heard about it. Yeah, I yeah, had never so, heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you're a Microsoft. I team. know, I know. I should know everything, <laughs> so right? I told you something, yeah, though. There you go. I'm proud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, so this is a, a pretty general question, but um, I'll ask it anyway. <laughs> cool, it's cool. Uh, just Windows 7. I mean, is it is it truly, in your in your unbiased opinion, more secure than any of our other OSs? Yes, I agree. Yeah. I have to think a little bit. I mean, normally I would like to do the comparison with XP and Vista. Uh -huh. And I think XP was actually a great operating system for its time. Mm -hmm. And we needed to, I mean, the world was changing after, this, after XP, so we came to Vista. And I think Vista didn't get the security attention it deserved. Mm -hmm. I think it was, there some things we didn't like about Vista, obviously. I mean, it wasn't a big success. I mean, but many of the security features were in Vista already, and they were good. Yeah. They were just not user-friendly. So in Windows 7, they took it all the way. They added some extra features to the security features, like BitLocker is now BitLocker to go, and you can do BitLocker Smart Card and BitLocker Smart Card Recovery, which is also a great feature. Mm -hmm. But it's user-friendly, so Vista was good when it came to security. I think the only real major adopters that were happy about Vista were the ones who needed high security. And in Windows 7, I think it's, it's great. And it's also fun as a security consultant, because the features are cool. I like to play with them. Yeah. That's strange, you know. It's, it's just fun to play with them. Yeah. yeah. They're that user friendly. OK. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, thanks for your time and, and your insights. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah. Till next time, right? Sure. <laughs>